out so everyone knows where the, what we're going to do. We have, uh, um, Randy's here from the golf course. Uh, he had a number of items that um, were brought up last night, uh, mainly by the mayor. Really, uh, she's not here now, but we talked about that in my sports. And then we have the uh, uh, site come at 5 30 and the people from the zoo come at 6. So uh, the agency requests are off for the discussion uh, this evening, and then we can hopefully start getting down to um, where we have to be at the, uh, towards the end of this week. Like I say, we have a hearing coming up on December 1st. We don't have a lot of time. Could meet again next week. Um, one of those days, I suppose, but, uh, if you have. But uh, uh, Randy's here. Maybe Randy give a recap of uh, where things are at this year and extravaganza money and what that's being used for and cameras and et cetera, et cetera. I guess it was it was a slow start to the year. We started uh, late again and it was wet at the beginning and October was pretty decent. November kind of shut us down quick. Uh, probably in the uh, same boat as we are last year. Uh, same, same, I would say, I don't know for sure. Yeah, it's pretty close to the other. I think we're 23,000. But, but uh, the extravaganza we raised somewhere around sixteen thousand dollars, and 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 we put that in the city fund, and that's going towards a new fairway more, with the condition that the extravaganza raise more money and, and pay that off over the over the next few years, so hopefully in a year, maybe two. I don't know. It depends on what we raise. We had some wet conditions issues out there that were bad for us this year. That uh, we had a lot of drainage on our property from other properties. What is your of course uh, uh, all fairways are all irrigated? Yes. Okay. Um, Two thousand three, we stuck a three hundred thousand dollars system into it. Yeah. The uh, I think the mayor had said that last night she had some complaints that the fairways were. Uh, Fairways were in tough shape for some reason or other. Don commented he never uses them, so it wasn't a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> they may have been. We were without water for uh, a couple weeks oh. because uh, of a lightning strike. We lost oh, uh, power. We had to trace trace down the wiring, and we also lost uh, uh, a few thousand dollar forty horse motor. So that had to all get replaced. But if they if they dried out a little bit, and also in the spring it was a it was a rough year for winter kill. We don't spray our fairways for for uh, winter kill for gray snow mold or pink snow mold. So therefore, it it, it was a harsher winter. The, the the ground stayed under cover for a lot longer than normal from almost the first week in November till till April 21st. Excuse me. So it was a long year for for snow cover. So therefore, this, the grass did die a bit. So, but it, they they made a nice comeback. We aerated them this fall. Yeah, we aerated them and overseeded them this fall. That so. might have related to the to the uh, concern after the, the lightning strike that we had. And it, you know, the public may or may not know that it was a lightning strike, and we were out for a couple weeks. A couple weeks in the middle of the summer can be tough. We handed out uh, this information, and this uh, goes month by month, and it starts back in 2010. Uh, to, the, to today, and as I mentioned last night, if you look at October uh, 2014 and you go back to October of 2013, uh, we're real close from the standpoint of uh, uh, revenue and expense. Uh, now you see expense has gone up uh, a little bit, about 5000 bucks here, but you can see revenue has also gone up uh, in the, uh, the course between if you look at 13 versus 14, and, and here we just, uh, we didn't use the revenue and expense all the way down, but in, in the previous years, we just kind of made a running uh, total of where we were from a cash standpoint. As you can see in 2012, you know, a real good year, started real early, uh, went real late, and uh, uh, ended up, you know, from a cash standpoint, uh, down at about $2,500 $2, in the hole. Here, you know, based on what I'm seeing, October to October, probably looking at about the same amount of, uh, of loss at the end of the year, 2013-2014. Um, uh, so that's why I was, just, uh, I was mentioning that last night. It, it looks real, real similar to what it uh, what it looked like uh, last year. So, uh, 
like I say, I mean, it's, it's very, very uh, dependent on, on whether um, I did look, uh, or Lori did look back on, on the, I mentioned a newspaper article a number of months ago when we were talking about the golf course, and I got, I did find that. There were six out of 41 municipal courses that, that actually turned a, a profit back in 2011, according to the state auditor's office. So six out of 41, it's it. Uh, we'd like to be seven out of, the number seven out of 41, obviously, but, uh, you know, there's some uh, pretty big uh, operations. Edinburgh was, uh, was really where the, the uh, story came out about Brooklyn Park. And uh, I mean, they're, they're losing tons of money. And you look, at, you look back and you think, uh, you know, $20,000, 20, $20, uh, uh, you know, isn't, it isn't out of hand, isn't too terrible. It'd be nice to, to, to be able to, to move that up. How many uh, memberships do we have? That was another question. For Approximately 275. 275. What was the peak? Uh, you, uh, 2000, or 1998, there was uh, 555. Oh, really? Yeah. That's when you're. Uh, your Oak Hill, your uh, Eagles Landing, your Blackberry Ridge came in. Your you had five new courses built in the area in, in a matter of five years there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I think economy is way different than economy. Yeah. So basically, yeah. it's in half from there. Yeah. And then the, uh, we did have a uh, discussion a little bit about the cameras last night, and, and I know that you and I and Greg talked about getting those piped into some other location, and you know, we'll continue to work on that. But uh, uh, POS system, you're up, updating on all that. We yep. talked about inventory and getting that done before the end of the year. And then there was some uh, uh, discussion of uh, just making sure that everything is recorded uh, and, and priced appropriately based on the inventory and the, and the controls. And, work on that. We talked about uh, if, if need be, if, uh, if, if you need some help, we can send someone from our office down for a couple hours here and there and, and uh, uh, you know, run through all that stuff. Sometimes it takes two people to do some of those things, so, uh, you know, to, to be able to, to work that out, so. We keep, you know, we, we try to stay on it, uh, you know, it isn't, uh, it, it's so weather related and it was, uh, Pretty, uh, pretty overbuilt. I mean, there's courses closing everywhere. Just trying to find anyone. Uh, I don't know if there. What other? Uh, I don't remember the other questions that we had. Uh, I believe the mayor wanted a list of improvements from the 2000s till now. It's close to a million dollars of improvements that we've done. I've got it estimated at at nine hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Overall improvements in Overall 15 years. So if it was an asset, it'd be something, but obviously it's a deficit. One of the other questions that was asked was the Gulf Extravaganza. So this is, they started, um, their group started in 2010, uh, had their event. So you can see the first year, um, you know, they raised $17,000. Um, in 2011 was just over 14, 2012 was just over 15, and 2013 was 11, and 2014 was um, just over $11,000. With that, they bought the mower, they paved some of the cart paths, bought some tables, did some repairs to the irrigation. Um, as of the end of, right now, there's 11,000, they're sitting here in the city, $11,494, and then the council approved purchase of that mower at 34000 So you know, two more events and they should have them more paid off. So that's just kind of a recap of what the extravaganza has done. Oh, and I'd say as far as budgeting goes, I, I believe we had the conversation earlier in the year that it was an asset to the community. And I thought that the intention was to continue to move forward uh, with it. And if we need to support it, with it than we ever voted. That was the understanding I got. Yeah, we included the $25,000. That was in the 20, 2014 budget, as we talked about last night. We'll make those transfers uh, coming up here. But uh, we did include another $25,000 uh, in the budget for 2015. So it, uh, it is there. It uh, should, should help. Obviously, there's some, there's some longer term uh, debt out there. And, and I think it was like around half or so that it might, it might 
be in the fall, but um, you know, we, Randy and I talked a little bit about what are other, some other options. I mean, you know, if it's billboards or if it's you know advertising, you know, we're getting those really basically for nothing. Uh, most, and we'd like to get a billboard on the, the the right side, east side of the highway as you're driving up, because that's kind of the spot more people are looking at. I'd like to do that. There might be a, a way of trying to do that with Franklin. Uh, because we got a billboard and we got to negotiate on, uh, on uh, uh, by uh, the salt area over there. Again. So there might be some, you know, horse trading that we can uh, we can do with uh, as we negotiate that. Oh, maybe not. I don't know. It has to come back to you. Anyway. So not to go backwards, but have you ever looked at or checked into going down to a nine instead of an eighteen? I never have. No. You know, as far as I'll keep a maintenance on the other nine. Would it if if it's a nine holes the front nine we can't do nothing with, I suppose it right, that's deeded to the city and you've actually got it's it's you would have to redesign the course because it's it's both sides. Eight and eight and nine on the part of seven, eight and nine are are part of that lease property and then your sixteen, seventeen and eighteen are, are on that. Or up the other nine. If the city could sell sell our land and use that to improve, I don't know what's out there. So I couldn't tell you. You can tell me where hole nine is, and I couldn't. Yeah. I've never been on the golf once in a while. Yeah. I'll take you yeah. Either I think that the draw, the draw for, for the, the golfer person, the golfer is going to what for an eighteen for an eighteen versus a nine. Yeah. That's what I, you know. I, I was just. Um, well, what part of the. Um, Revenue is for from for from meals. The food that you uh, I don't have that breakdown, but it's it's, it's a smaller amount. Okay. You've is got you, you can look at your, your yeah your, your, uh, a hundred and some hundred and ten thousand is is membership seventy three thousand is three feet. No no no. Is on page sixty of of the budget packet? It's on page sixty. Sixty zero. And there's a breakdown. I'm sorry, you didn't need to interrupt, but there's a breakdown of, of buying line items. So, you know, our food sales in 2012 were 43,000, 2013 were 41,000, right now we're at 33,000, and then typically there are some Christmas parties and those kinds of things that'll come in yet before the end of the year. Yeah, seven, how many Christmas parties you got coming up? Seven, yeah. plus, plus the Lions Club every Thursday evening. So you have the food is a smaller part, and it was always a bigger loss, yeah. and it was open a lot more, and we curtailed that quite a little to cater to the to the golfer more so than the public. And, and we met. I mean, Randy, myself, and Jerry, we went up to Brainerd and met with um, the small business administration lady up there just to kind of talk about pricing and you know where we were at and stuff. And you know that was one of her suggestions is. We aren't a full-fledged restaurant. You're not going to make money being a full-fledged restaurant. So you're going to, you know, cut down your menu. You know, you're providing a service to your golfers. If you have the parties out there that you you have a captured audience, you know how many people you're cooking for. Um, you know that's okay. But you're not. We're not going to make money being a restaurant and, and trying to be open and catering to the public. So that's why, you know, the menu got cut down some. Like Randy said, there's open as much. And I hear a lot of compliments about the food, especially the cheeseburgers at <laughs> yeah. lunchtime. Well, I hope that stat stays that way. We lost our, our cook re is retiring this year, so. Mm -hmm. But I still have one that's been there for 14 years. So as far as the pro shop this year, did you do much in there? Not a lot. I, I put in a few shoes. I bought gloves and balls and a few oddball things that people special ordered. We're going to have all the shirts. And no, I, I still have a bunch of them from previous years, but we're downsizing that. And as soon as we get that downsized, we'll go to special order only. It's just kind of a, a major overhead we don't need, right? Well, you know, it's ironic because I have a lot of people that come to me and say, you know, God, you don't know when you can eat out at the restaurant. There's a lot of community members that I think don't understand why it was cut back. Uh, that it's a financial thing because I think they're still looking at it as a, cho a choice to dine in the community and 
So they say, God, their menu is so limited, I can't believe it, and, and things like that. So, you know, it's almost like we go back and forth with that, and I don't think we have a true identity either way yet. Uh, hours have been set for three years now, 11 till 3, Monday, or Tuesday and Wednesday till dark, and, and weekends on special occasions for special events. So that's been three years running now, <laughs> and trying to keep it consistent like that. And our menu, the way this advisor had explained it to us, you know, if you've got cheese on it, let's be out using it in three or four different items, otherwise it's, you're losing money with it. So, and, so that's the route we took. I'm not a restaurateur, I'm a superintendent. I know golf <laughs> and grounds. I'm not a bartender, I'm not a, a, a manager of a pro shop, I'm not a, a, a cook, a restaurateur. I'm, my You're field really specialty is. You're a really good cooker. <laughs> my specialty is my field and my education is in golf. So, anybody else got any questions, or anything? No, I was just going to say there's no doubt it serves benefit to the community. We don't want to lose our golf course, but on the other hand, sure would be nice if we could break even. Uh, I agree with you. That's, that's a complaint I hear from any everyone in town. If there is a complaint, it isn't bad fairways or bad that it's a bad course or anything. It's just uh, we're losing money on the thing. They're concerned about that. Uh, if there's a way we can break even on this thing, how much money do we it? lose on the other parks? They're considered parks, you know. Uh, is this is this just a, a park for a certain group of people? This isn't a park that's open for everyone. Only people who can go out there are those who can afford it, which a lot of people can. Go out there, um, come out there on Monday and see how many kids are out there that are well, we're just, free. We're just saying that the economy isn't doing that well, and that's why it's suffering. So that means there's a lot of people who aren't able to go out there because if they were, the attendance would be up and stuff right now. Uh, I would like to see a break even. Oh, we gotta push, like to see we gotta push for a way, but you know, if we're gonna throw $25,000 a year just to cover it, because we're gonna accept the fact that for the next 20 years, it's gonna be bringing $25,000 in a hole, I'm not for that. I'm just wasting my opinion here. Well, to me, that's no different than what we're looking at for a splash pad skate park. Do we know. have that splash pad? I know we don't have it, but that's won't. a whole other thing. It's in the budget. Go. It won't go now. Right. I mean, uh, so there's nothing for the kids. We're catering here just for a select group of people. I want to say there's nothing for the kids. There's a lot for the kids. Yeah. Frank, I happened to mention to to our our extravaganza and also to our men's league that maybe a five percent increase would would be in line for this coming year for memberships. And 5% isn't a lot, but 5% of $100,000 is something. And if that can go towards that, hopefully that can, that can push towards that item. You know, we're, we're kind of in line, we are in line with green fees with the rest of the area. And that's tough to push. Your membership, they'll do that because they don't want to travel out of town. They can, they can come and play. There's some guys that, that play that course, and they play it often enough where it's down into 35 cents a round for them to play. You know, where others play it 10 times a year and pay their $500 and it costs them $50. But, you know, so that's one way to do it, and, and the members feel that it, that isn't way out of line. It's still a very economical course to play. So I don't know if that helps your, your mind set at all. I think. I just think that, you know, we do need a board out there. We're required to have one. Maybe following year here, we could pursue this a little harder and get some people who understand the golf course, uh, and see if there's a way to do it. I agree. And uh, the committed group. I don't know if that's possible, but it sure would be nice. But no, I, if I can just state my opinion on that, I, Randy's the only department head that would report to a board, and I don't, I don't know if that's appropriate. He reports to us. The extravaganza group is a great group. They give him a lot of input, and they're not a city committee. They can raise funds. 
I, mean, I, I think we're in the same catch-22 as you get into like the like the sister city group where you you, know, you don't if you have a group that can't raise funds, but the group that you want is the group that that you want to raise funds. So is it I just, required I, I to have a board there? Uh, is it by that a requirement? By your city code. By your city code. But right you can, now you, you do. can change that. Well, well, we I can think, change I think it. We can change a lot of things. We tried to change it one time and then it was voted down. Yeah. I just think it's more good. I don't, I don't it, see a need for that yeah. for that board. I think you got the extravaganza group, and we asked. I mean, we talked to Jeremy about attending those meetings, and, and I think I think that's just a better way. That's just my opinion. You guys make the decisions, but we'll probably talk about this again. You know, in the upcoming year, I don't know, but uh, just. Well, I don't know why Randy should report to a board like that when none of, nobody else does. Randy doesn't, himself said he nobody. thought we should have a board. It, it's it nice to have a sounding board such as the extravaganza. The advisory board was wonderful when we had an advisory board that were among a lot of members, golfers. Mm -hmm. Our last advisory board were people from outside the area that didn't know anything about golf. One yeah. person attended one meeting, one attended two in three years. I mean, you know, you need you need consistency. You need a form. And somebody who understands. Understands. Out there. Yeah. But right now, if you're right. a part of the extravaganza, you can't be part of the advisory board. So therefore, if you're a part of the men's league and stand and building money for 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 that, you can't be you can't be a me, a, a league member then either. You're it's a catch twenty two. So therefore, you you can't be a, a have full interest in that golf course. And, 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 and support it by being on a, on a board. We need something to, to change there. What personally do you feel if you had some, a good group of people that you could sit down and talk with once in a while, hash things through, maybe uh, operate it where it could produce a little more income or something, would you want such a board? I, I feel we have that in the extravaganza. I, 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 I sound off them quite a lot. Okay. And I also sound off our men's league board. We have we have several boards. The women's league has a board. The men's league has a board. The extravaganza has a board. We used to have an advisory board. So there are several boards, and I attend a lot of those meetings. So you do get your in. We do get. I do get input because I sit on the end with the ladies' league. And get their input. They sit in with the men's league and get their input. But yeah, I think I think we're always looking for a way we can bring this to a where we break even. But I haven't seen it in the six years I've been on here. Every year we've lost money, uh, economy or what? How long do we continue losing it? You know, what's more important? Yes, we have to look at things like yeah, that. Yeah, that's your decision. Yeah. Okay, that's all I have. Well, I just say that I have a lot of people uh, from outside our commu community that come through the Colburns, and uh, without fail, they tell us, boy, you guys are lucky to have a golf course along the Mississippi River, and that is a beautiful, unbelievable course. And, you know, it's hard to measure what they, if they spend money in our hotels, if they spend money in our bars, our restaurants. Or if they continue to come back for that same reason, and so the Greenspees uh, also have an effect on it, what it does for the kids program. Uh, you know, and I'd like to see uh, uh, the golf program back into the shape it was yes. a lot of years ago, uh, because I think that stimulated more interest as they grow up. They continue to play it if they're around here. But uh, I agree; it'd be great to uh, get back to. Uh, not losing money, but you know, to think we're going to do it in a year. And I know, Frank, you said it's been six years. And I look at 2012, and it was uh, less than 2,500. And I, I don't know what dictated that. If it was just a great summer, or or what happened. But uh, you know, if you if you think there's room to uh, wiggle a little bit on memberships, uh, the greens fees are extremely competitive everywhere with the cancer cards and all the cards and everybody's got coupons and 18 holes and food they're throwing in. So, uh, you know, that's a competitive market. So you just gotta fight for your life with that. And I think we did a good job of that. So Randy, you know, thinking of raising your fees 5%, you know, you, you chase, what, five, five members, 10 members away? You back, I, you know, you back down to 
you're losing money anyhow, then if you would... Yeah, I'm not... You got 200 members, yeah. and if you lose 10 of them because you raise your fees 5%, you're going backwards. That's a possibility, <laughs> but it's, you know... Right. I guess I, I, I've sounded it off several of them, a lot of the, the, the men's league and a lot of this, the, the members that have been there a long time don't seem to have a problem with it. We're still in line with everybody else. You know, Long Prairie is two, three hundred dollars a single membership higher than we are. Oak Hill is, is up there along that. Eagles Landing is a lot closer to what we have. But they also don't like going to Eagles Landing and taking five and a half hours to play 18 holes either. They like to do it in, in their four hours. So yeah. that is, is a trade-off. And Randy, I'll, we'll review the, the race membership rates sure. chart before we set them into yeah. the into the Of the course, yeah. Of the I'd like to get that done as, as you know, I, I kind of like to look at when everybody comes online and puts theirs in there so we know we're not the, 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 the trendsetter, you know. Yeah. Any more questions? Otherwise, we'll go on to uh, Humane Society. I think is up. Thanks, Randy. Yeah, you bet. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, thanks.
I've also included our spay neuter, which is something we're trying to do for all of our animals before they leave. Um, it's not, we're not at 100%, but we all are giving out a coupon for people to do that on their own um, if the animal leaves before, um, before that's done. Um, I have our fees for um, impound, you know, what we collect from people if they come to claim their dog, and then some of our adoption fees. Um, I have a proposed budget for 2015, and I'm trying to think for you can take a look at that. Um, we're working really hard to do a lot more fundraising, grant writing, um, that sort of thing to get some funds in. We've all also started rooming at the shelter, which is running a small income for us. Um, we're basically trying to generate as much income as we can because you'll see from our profit and loss on the last page, um, and this has been a pattern for as long as I can go back in the books, that the shelter has been struggling financially and ending the year at a, in the red. So this year we're asking for a pretty big increase and we need that increase in order to cover our, our expenses. Um, essentially, if we we don't get that increase, I'm not sure if we'll be able to operate for the year. Um, I've included as well. We're trying to, you know, have some more. Some of, we're trying to switch things a little bit for the, the um, townships, where we're going to do a similar contracting with them, where they pay a fee per household and um, then we take whatever strays that, that they provide to us. So um, I don't know if that kind of covers it. If there's any questions, I'm sure, I'm sure there are some. Our biggest, um, biggest expenses, I guess, are our payroll expense. And that's something as a shelter where we have animals coming in and out. We're there 365 days a year. Whether we're open or closed, we still have to be there to feed and care for the animals. Um, our second biggest expense is our vet care costs, and that's something, you know, if an animal comes in sick or hurt, um, we, we definitely have to tend to that so that they're well cared for. What's the request? What's the um, Is it 65 or is it 70? Is that well, yeah, 70, um, 70. We talked about 70. I talked about 70 originally. Um, it 70, it might be 60 there. But then we received a um, bigger increase from the county, Morrison County. So we, I think we, is that, was it adjusted in your? Well, no, actually, I think the 65 came from, and I, it was back, what, two months ago or yeah. something when you brought in your yep. profit and loss, and yep. that's what the profit and loss was at yep. that time. Yep. Um, was what the schedule was. So that's what I stuck in yep. here. Okay. But then now I see your profit and loss is at 74. Right. Or, yep. um, and then this includes the increase that you received from the county, right? In the profit and loss, it does not. Um, in, in the cost, I mean. Okay, yep. Yep. Right. Okay. Yep. Without the without increase without an increase without sure. some kind of an increase, how sure. can you operate? Um, without an increase, um, <coughs> something like what we have here, I I don't think we would operate for the year. I think it would probably be something where we would get a plan to transition the shelter back to the city or to the city. Um, we just, I mean, I don't know if we could operate for the. I mean, it would be a, a big struggle, and I would worry that we wouldn't be able to pay our employees and we would be able to properly care for the animals. So that's, that would, that's kind of where we're at. So. Have you had any, quite here. Yep. Have yep. you had any yep. uh, success with the townships? Uh, we've just, so there are several townships that we, uh, we've just approached them with the actual documents. So we haven't heard back from a lot of them, but there are several that we ha have heard back from that are, um, interested and willing to, to sign on for the new contract and that should that should bring us more um, financial support um, you know when you look at our num the numbers that you know the 80 I forget what it is, um, you know
you know, 84% came from the city. They did, but they maybe didn't. You know, with the way the townships work now, it's complicated and difficult, and I think there are a lot of, of the dogs and cats that maybe are being dropped in the city. Uh, for example, we had six cats on our doorstep this morning. Um, <coughs> they're counted as a city stray because they came in, they're abandoned in the city. Did they come from the city? I would probably guess probably not. So it's hard to know, and with that, that with the new contract for the townships, we're kind of structuring and similar to this, and hopefully we can get, you know, ideally all of them to sign on to it, we get a better picture, and the financial responsibility would be more evenly distributed. But Rose, isn't it true through history that the townships have really not wanted to help? Yes. So Dan, that's been a long struggle with the townships. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. You know, I mean, there are some. There's a there's a couple that are very good about it. Um, there are a lot that don't really want to be involved at all. So. Um, they use a 22 shell. Yeah. Why do you want to talk? They dealing with this. They dealing for a long time. It's, yeah. it's expensive. It's I know when uh, Brainer could have told me that size. You're paying seventy, eighty thousand dollars a year on, on animal control. Drives you nuts. But you get a box of cats or a box of dogs that end up the holiday station. What are you doing? If we didn't have this group, we would be in such trouble. Well, there's, there's, there's no doubt, and, and, and as I, want, I knew the Rose's answer. But what happens if you don't get some funding? You're going to give it back to the city. Well, I tell you what, we're not going to run it cheaper. Not when you got unions and, and pay equity and, and everything else. I mean, I, I don't think. I mean, it, it just, I don't know what, it's, a, it's, it's kind of a, it's a seven day a week uh, job as, as well. Someone's got to come in on Saturday and Sunday and holidays and Christmas and whatever and feed and, and do whatever. So, you know, it's it's, it's up to you the dollar amount, of course. I I mean, I, we don't want anything to do with it <laughs> from a staff standpoint. Whatever they're doing here. The 65000 is in your budget. I mean, it's, it's you see the dollar, the number in here. So um, that's the dollar amount you want to do or, or if you do something different with that, then you to Talk about from there, but, uh, so this minus seventy four thousand that is so far this year mm -hmm. where you're at it operating. Yep. So yep. how do you you have to pay that before you can go into next year? Yep. Yep. So is and that added into next year's budget? No, where a lot of that has come from, and it's very very unfortunate. The the I should have had a balance sheet here, but this the um, group we did have a, a large donation um, to the shelter years and years ago. And that money has been chipped away at for operating expenses for, I mean, as long as it's been there, it seems to be. Um, and we're running out with that. And it's not, I don't feel it's responsible to continue to do that either. I mean, it's its unfortunate that that's happened. So that's where that's sure. being okay. made up. Yeah. And our, our community has been quite fortunate from that generous donor. Yeah. Yeah. And it's time that we, we take uh, leadership and help you with that. Yes. <coughs> how much did the county, how much were they, how much did they go up? They gave us 20000 this year, for, you know, for 2015, they're giving us 30000 They're up to 30 they yep. went up 10 yep. Sarah, I've got a question for you. Sure. If I'm reading this right, we've got about 216 animals this year, including the dogs and cats. Yes, and there might be... The Smoking animals will be five, I think. For the intake of the animal care. Yep, for a total of $94,000, 416 yep. cents, or $416. That comes up to about $437 per animal. Is yep. there any way to do that and that's, less expensive? Yep, and well, that's kind of if we did everything, like that we like spayed and neutered everybody, everybody got all of their vaccines. Um, you know, we heartworm test some of them. If they're a puppy, they don't need a heartworm test. Um, that sort of thing. I mean, we, we've talked as an organization about cutting things like vaccines and, and the heartworm testing. Um, we've cut down spay and neuter because that's something that can be more, I guess, you know, it's not going to necessarily affect their health while they're there. Um, 
but it comes down to for like the vaccines and, and that sort of thing. Um, if we stop doing Bortella, for example, which um, is kennel cough, I don't know how familiar, it's like a, um, it's a cough, it's not gonna probably kill them, but you have to treat it. And to treat, you know, if one dog comes in with it, we're treating all of them, and the expense to do that is cheaper than to just use the, you know, $4.50 cent vaccine for the dogs when they come in. True. So, um, you know, that's kind of the ideal scenario is if they came in and we gave them everything they wanted, we spayed and neutered them. Um, but this also doesn't include if they come in and they're sick and we need to bring them to the vet and they need, um, you know, antibiotics or they need, you know, have a laceration that needs to be sutured. So all of those, it's, there's so much variability there, it's hard to give, you know, that next year our vet costs will be, you know, at so. Is it something where, you know, I know St. Cloud has Tri-County mm -hmm. Mesa, have we explored, you know, contracting it out to, to them as far as that, those type of services? I don't know what they charge. Yeah. I'll be honest, $440 per animal seems like a lot. Yep. yep, and it is, it's a lot. It can be very expensive. Um, and this, you know, includes, you know, you know, they're here. some of them are there shorter, so it's, there's some variability there. I mean, the longer they're there, the more expensive it is for staff and, and all sorts of things. Um, we've started, if we have overflowed animals, we've started, and we've done this, I think, the last three years, we will transfer out, you know, animals if other groups will take them. Um, right now, we are looking to try and do that for some cats because we're just overrun with cats. Um, it seems to be that that's a pattern. Um, but yeah, they, you know, that's something we could explore. We're always looking to do things cheaper. Um, a lot of our vet costs, like the um, rabies and that sort of thing is done. We have a low cost spay neuter truck. You, you might have seen it in the parking lot over there that comes once a month. So we take advantage of that as much as we can. Um, you know, that's, so. So what determines if a cat or a dog gets euthanized then? Um, time that they've been there type of deal? We or? don't do anything as far as, you know, they've been here X amount of time, it's time to euthanize. Um, you know, if there's aggression issues, um, if they're not adoptable as far as being, you know, they're not friendly or that sort of thing, we can usually try and transfer them out. Um, if they're sick, that may be something where we we'll euthanize them. I, I'd say sickness or um, aggression are the two. We haven't had to euthanize for space yet being that we're transferring out a lot of our animals, um, but that's something right now we're, we're verging on if we don't find somewhere for some cats. So um, it's primarily for sickness, I would say, or aggression that is our euthanasia. Rose, that 430 per animal, but that, that includes like like the electric bill. Yep, and, yep the and, overhead so, of the building. So you know, you can't just say, well, gosh, my cat doesn't cost 430. Yeah. I mean, because you're taking care of the whole facility. Exactly. And our insurance is, we have a, a lot of, you know, things that we pay for on that building. Insurance, water, we staff. use a lot of water, staff, um, cleaning supplies, um, all sorts of, you know, things like that to keep that building up and running. Well, our, our uh, community, our residents are going to have to assume the responsibility one way or the other, either with tax dollars or, or by taking care of their pets and, and doing the right thing with them. And I think that building was, was not donated also. It was, yeah. And so I mean, we have to really appreciate that also. Yeah. Yeah. What's happening in a lot of places, I've been to bird watching, so we're kind of up in arms about communities who spade their animals and turn them loose. Sure. They just take the cats, spade them, turn them loose, and let them live all their life until they die. They can't have any more. Uh, but that's a lot less expensive. Uh, $440 is a lot of money per animal. How much do you charge to adopt them out? For adoption, I have it here. Cats, well, right now we're having a, a kind of a special on, on cats. Um, it's usually $50 for adoption. Um, Right now, we have a name your price with a $10 minimum because we're just so full. Um, dogs, we have at $100. So it's kind of a balance because um, if you put it too high, you know, if we said, okay, this dog is $500 because we need to cover the cost of him being here, he's going to be there forever. 
<coughs> maybe you know one person you know the chances of adopting a dog at five hundred dollars in this community are slim to none um, so it's a balance of you know putting it at, at a reasonable amount so that you're getting something back um, but also not putting it too high so that they're there forever and it's you know not feasible for someone to take home so what usually happens to me i get a free cat from a farm yeah take it in and they give the shots have it spayed and spayed and i go through the whole process which cost me a lot of money when i could have got that cat all top right yep. ready to go for 50 bucks yep. you know uh, is there a way to advertise that keep people from just yeah. bringing in animals and yeah i mean we have some of that printed out you know because the cost for people that have animals um the cost for bringing them to the vet and just even keeping them up to date and don't even have any problems on their vaccines is um, probably more than $100 for you to do that. So, yeah. So, we, I mean, you know, we've had it a little bit higher in the past. Um, we've kind of lowered it now because we're, we're on the, the very full side and we want to, you know, encourage people to come in. Um, so it is a, a, a big balance to try and because like I said, the longer they're there, the more expensive it gets for us, so. Is there a way to, to kind of track where the animals are coming from? I guess, are a lot of them puppies and kittens that are that are coming? And, and if so, are they repeat vendors, so to speak, where we can encourage them, hey, bring your adult ones here, well, let's get them spayed and neutered yeah. so we don't keep having this problem with 200 animals a year. Thing. Yep, exactly. We try, we do try and do that, you know, encourage, especially people bringing in like a litter of cats yep. or, or litter of puppies. And if they're doing it frequently, we try and, um, you know, help encourage them to, you know, get them on at least the low cost spay-neuter bus. Um, and we, we do try and promote that. With the strays, it's hard to know, you know, where the where they originated from. There are times people bring in a dog as a, or a cat as a stray and for you know, pretty sure it was theirs. Um, that will happen, but there's no way to prove it. We just, you know, we and like I said, we can track where they come from as far as stray from the city of Little Falls, stray, you know, city of Piers. But I have a feeling there's a lot of um, in the numbers you get from the city. There are a lot of them migrating in from outside areas. Any more questions? So. <coughs> Mr. President, I'd like to make a comment, please. Um, I'm, I have been a resident here for 20 years, and I'm troubled by a lot of things that I have witnessed, and that is a really constant turnover of staff. Um, a few years back, there was a really bad stench in the building. I'm troubled by some of the laughter over the use of a gunshot to kill an animal that seems really crude, <coughs> crass, and out of place for a community council that supports kindness. So I just want to share that. I witnessed as an eight-year-old girl, dogs being killed by gunshot by the police department in the town I lived in. And that's what spurred me to become an animal activist. I have been honored by another humane society in another county for investigative work that I did to shut down a very illegal practice that was going on with the knowledge of the county commissioners. They knew this practice was going on. They were injecting black leaf 40, which is a rose insecticide, under the front arm of the dog. They were having older senior veterans, military veterans, do this. And it appeared that the dog was not suffering, but it was asphyxiating to death and bleeding to death. It was a horrible practice. The Humane Society, nationally, internationally, everybody condemned this practice. But this went on. I think that this city council needs to have at least two members on the board to protect for all kinds of reasons, for oversight reasons. You have staff that's administering or overseeing vaccinations going on here. And I'm not saying anything is illegitimate or not right, but I think it's really important for city council members, at least two, to be on board this staff to attend the meetings to see what is going on. And Dan's right. It would cost a lot more for this city to operate a pound. 
Someone has to do it, it's an expensive cost. I suggested the last time you talked about Humane Society dollars, there be a mandatory spay and neuter program in this city. It's long overdue nationwide. International, we, we should be doing this. We have a crisis of an overpopulation of animals in the world. And there's a, an incredible amount of animal suffrage that doesn't need to be occurring. So that's my suggestion that, and I'd be happy to sit on the board. I'd love to be sitting on your board. I have a lot of experience in running my own little adoption service that came, the, the dogs that were coming out of that facility, I took a lot of them in and helped them get adopted on my own nickel. Before the, the commissioners, once they knew about this, changed the practice and started using sodium pentobarbital to put them to sleep via the local veterinarian, which should have been done that way in the first place. So those are my suggestions. I hope you take them. And if you let me know when the first board meeting is, I'll be happy to come and become a member. Anybody else have any questions? Thanks for your presentation. Thank you. The zoo's not here yet? Yep, they are actually yep. with that call. So if you're ready for that. Yep, yep, we're ready for the zoo. The zoo is on the 32. Okay, thank you. Well, good evening, everybody. Um, I want to thank you first for taking the time to talk with us as friends of the zoo. And um, I want to tell you a few things that's going on at the zoo. I'm just going to kind of highlight what I just gave you. Um, for the first time since we've been running the zoo, we had a year that was less than last year. Um, we, you know, the winter started out. Remember last winter? It seemed like we were and it was extremely cold and snowy, and so our heating, our electric, our snow plowing, all of that was a lot more than normal, and probably everybody in the room was. Um, and then this year, we also had a year that was a lot of rain. You know, rain, what, all the three or four days in June, and it seemed like every weekend we had one or two days that rained or it threatened to. And um, I don't know if you guys are, um, are, are used to this, but when people think it might rain and you're going to an outdoor event, sometimes you pull back and think, I'll go another weekend. So a lot of the weekends, we had one or two rainy days that seemed to be a problem all summer. And when you have a very short season like we have, um, losing a couple of those weekends in a row is something you really hard to get back. So we had um, about 7,000 people less this year at the zoo. We still had about 24,000 visitors, and that includes members, um, it includes um, three years and under, which is free, and it includes groups and then our regular admissions. Um, 
And despite the, the uh, bad weather, the tough weather, we actually had more educational programming for this season. So that was actually the positive. Even though it did seem to rain, they, they all made um, rainy day second schedules. And we were able actually to, to rebook them at a later time. We started back, we thought in the beginning of July that it was going to be a little tough because already in June we had some hard times and we thought we were going to have a little bit of harder time um, for the rest of the year. So we actually started cutting back. Um, and as you guys who run a business know, you, you still have to pay your employees, you still have to have the lights on, you still have to feed the animals. And ours are the four-legged kind, so if they don't get fed, it's really ugly. Um, and so there was a few things we, we obviously couldn't cut back, but we started to cut back the things that we could. This year, the zoo held the first ever zoo fest instead of zoo boo. Um, when we started the zoo boo 11 years ago, um, for those of you who can remember, you know, there wasn't a lot going on in town uh, for the zoo, um, and, or as far as trick-or-treating. And so we decided that we would do the zoo boo. But over the years, Almost every church, every group, almost every house is having parties of that, and it, the zoo booth started to decrease. So we wanted to do something a little different, we held the first ever zoo fest, and thought, well, we'll move at the beginning of October, so we'll have it much warmer, and we'll use, do it in the day, so it's much nicer. Um, it was 37 degrees <laughs> and 42 mile an hour winds. We actually had tents flying over fences. Um, but despite that, we still have 423 visitors, and if you compare that to the first year of the Zubu, the first year of Zubu, we had 491. So we're within pretty close, um, and considering that, you know, everybody was in parkas the October 6th, probably not too bad of a turnout for that particular day. We are for the first time asking the City Council for the interest from the Crafty Fund. We've never done that, we've never had to do that. We've always had extra money. We always put it right back into the zoo with a lot of improvements and different things like that. This year, we don't have that. We don't have a cushion. And so we are asking the council to um, uh, accept and pass that we would get the interest to get through to the first of the year and then through the winter um, as we don't have that pot sitting there. Um, and I'm talking with other zoos, resorts, um, different things like that. They all had bad years. A lot of the small zoos had bad years. What I didn't realize and didn't know until this year is most small zoos get operating loans every single winter to get through the winters. Very fortunately, we've not had to do that. I really don't want to start to do that because I think that starts to dig you a hole that you can't get out of. So we are requesting the um, funds, the, the interest from the crappy fund to get us through the winter and um, we would, if we don't use it, we want to actually keep it as a little, you know, I don't know how much we're going to use because I don't know how much snow we're going to get, but we are going to need that to get through the winter. Um, it's been a difficult year. Um, I've always been very straightforward and honest with you guys. Every year I've been able to come here and it's always been positive and great. And we're still positive and great, but we just had a hard year. And any of you who owns businesses or manages them knows that there can be difficult times sometimes, things outside of our control. And doggone it, we have not yet figured out how to control Mother Nature. We'd like to try, but we just can't. <laughs> the other thing I'd like to ask the council, we have an, with our budget, just the regular budget, we're not asking anything different than our normal 110, which is what we've been getting. Um, and the 6600 which we get with the contract with the Friends of the Zoo, so we're not asking for any more there. But we do have one more request. The Minnesota National Guard Child and Youth Program out of the Twin Cities area has contacted us and would like to do an overnight stay inside the zoo. Um, I asked how many it would be. They said anywhere between 30 and 50 children. They're not sure how many adults. And we would do programming, educational programming. Um, and we did this, oh gosh, I think four or five years ago, we did an overnight stay of sleepover. Um, but we're asking that we would be able to do that again. Um, I'm not sure how the policy sits with that. Um, but they already want to schedule that so they can already get that scheduled in their programs. So it's actually a military group, a youth program. And they want, us, they want to do that late August next year or early September. 
Um, so I'm asking the council if we would be able to go ahead and schedule that as well. And then the positive note is we already are getting programming scheduled for 2015, some educational programming. Um, so this is looking positive. We expect that this is going to be a one-time thing. The other thing I know um, we had talked about as a group is you're all aware that there was a new zoo that opened up in Brainerd on 371. Um, you know, we were kind of thinking, yeah, that might hurt. You know, it's a first time year and people are going to go see. And if you're a family, you're going to go do one animal thing and you're going to go do a lot of fun thing. And people went out of curiosity. We did have a fair amount of complaints about the facility. Um, our visitors came and, and had some complaints. And I think that's one of those things that we're going to weather just fine, just like we did with um, the Hempford Park Zoo that opened up in Cold Spring. They opened the first year, did the same thing, set us back a little bit, people were curious. And then it's just like everything else, it all just kind of works itself out. So did that hurt us? Perhaps. Um, the weather sure did not help us at all. Um, and so those are our requests for the council this evening. Is that Brainerd Zoo, is that private? It is a private owned zoo, yeah. yeah. And I don't know, um, Brian, I, there's debate as where the animals go, and I know there's concerns with some of our visitors because, you know, there's a draft. Yeah. So there, we don't know the details to that. But what I've heard is um, he actually had, um, I guess you'd call it a traveling zoo, and um, we have a keeper that lived down in by the Oxbow Zoo, and he had the a traveling zoo down there as well. And you know, I don't know if he'll, you know, how long he's going to be here, or if he's going to be here long term. Um, I, I'm not sure, but we want to, you know, I always say well, we're just going to take care of our own business and do what we can do and do it well, and um, and that's all we can do. Um, but what the I don't know where the animals go, or but it is a, a <coughs> private owned facility, yes. Lori, the Crafty, the Crafty Trust, um, or the gift from the Crafty Estate, were there stipulations to that, or have, have we used any interest for We have, actually. Um, we did, uh, I don't remember if it was three years ago or something, we did buy some um, equipment needs for the, for the Friends of the Pine Bowl Zoo. I think we bought a, um, what do call it, a station gun, a dark gun, a dark gun. kind of a thing. Um, and there were some capital expenditures that were made that were paid for out of the Crafty Trust. Um, the, the trust does say, and I, I, since I brought it along, um, it says, in effectuating the purpose of this trust fund, the council may use the resources of the fund to acquire land, install equipment, contribute to maintenance, landscape and capital improvements to benefit the Pine Grove Park Reserve. So you can use it for maintenance. And there is just over $33,000 in the fund. Of interest. Of interest. That doesn't touch the purpose then. In the past, we've used that to pay off the debt. No. Nope. Remember the crafty, it's always came from. We haven't taken the only money that's come out of here is just to do that one. And one year we did some capital things where they did it. So the debt came in comes out of the other fund. But do we, we, we transfer money, we haven't done anything for a couple of years to that. But I think the Dewey Trust has helped with that here. The, the Dewey Trust has helped with it, but it does not do it every year. It did last year, didn't it? So that balance is just there, and we just pay on the interest. Well, it, we, the, the Zoo Improvement Fund receives um, water tower revenue. We have antennas on the water tower over there. So the revenues, I think it's about $1,500 a month go into that fund so that it's paying down that debt slowly by $1,500, $1,600 a month. And then on occasion, we've transferred money from the um, either the park improvement, the general fund, or the interest from the Dewey fund um, to, to help pay down that debt as well. I'll have to look at Parks and Rec. Parks is they haven't done it for quite a while. I don't I, think the last year or two, I don't I think know we done. have talked about it. We discussed selling some property in this town and that would go towards that. I don't know if it did. Nope, that money's sitting in the equipment fund and that's something else the council because we didn't have 
there was not a firm decision made on what they wanted to do with that money. So right now, I believe it's sitting in the equipment fund, and I need to figure out what the profit is on that because we had assessments and other things to pay, and then the council needs to decide what they want to do with that. Will we do that before the end of the first of the year, Lori? Um, we may. Usually all those transfers are done like in January um, of next year for, for the previous year. How long has that been sitting in there, just this last year? Yeah, the one one lot we closed on like in January or February, and the other one just because of some issues, we didn't close on it until like June or July or something like that. Now, as far as the camping request that they've made, Frank, what is what is the policy now on camping in the parks? There is no policy in place to camp in the parks. So that's not that's not a possibility for them, or. It's a discussion, an ongoing discussion. It's never even been presented to the council. We've discussed it. That's as far as we've gotten. Well, I'm just bringing that up because of your request now about those 40 kids or something. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> looked at that under uh, our city code 1020, uh, uh, subdivision 14. It says, and these are uh, prohibited acts, to set up tent shacks or other temporary shelter, shelter for the purpose of overnight camping nor shall any person leave uh, after closing hours any movable structure or vehicle to be used for such purpose, such as a house trailer, camp trailer, uh, camp wagon, or the like, except as authorized and posted. As I read that, you certainly you can have your city attorney look at it, but as, if it's authorized and posted by the council, I'm assuming that it's a law. For a one-time event, or, yeah. Seems to me, I, yeah. and how long has that policy been? Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's an it's ordinance. It's not a policy. It's in city code. I don't know. I'm just just reading the literal reading of it because we can certainly have a city attorney. I know it's been an issue in right. some other things. Well, well that's why I, I mean, have we heard that before, Lori? When there was that other issue going on? Mm -hmm. So. It sounds like it's a doable thing then for them. If we, well, get, uh, you know, we want to be sure we'll have a request. I put a note on it. We want to make sure we get the request. Well, I'll have Tony look at it and bring it back to you guys. When do they want to run? This year? Yeah, they kind of schedule their their year out. So yeah. they, they actually came to the zoo and did a tour and checked out the facility because they've done it in Como Zoo and Minnesota Zoo, but they wanted to come to us, which I thought was great since they're from the Twin Cities. Um, and I don't know, do you have to have a, like a formal written request for that or? That'd be great. I mean, it would okay. be the best. And we have something to react to. Sure. Yeah. Sure. And do you have a nice spot for them? Yeah, we put them down by the cafe in that big flat spot okay. down there. Um, not in the barracks, is it? <laughs> <laughs> no, probably not. <laughs> a little richer for the barracks, but not great So that's actually barracks. not in the park to be in the zoo, right? right. Yep. That's it. That's my first question. I don't know. What's the park? A zoo? A mm -hmm. zoo park? I mean, <laughs> a zoo park. I mean, now is it you know defined? Can I have them park in the zoo? And just so you guys know, we'd have staff staying there all night, you know, um, so that there wouldn't be any issues with that. It is an enclosed facility, so that's nice because we don't have to worry about. Somebody doing something still in joining a group that's not supposed to be joining in, and uh, they wanted to do like you know things that that will bump in the night and all the education that goes with nocturnal animals and things like that. And actually, the one year that we did do that, and it's been several years ago, we actually had a visitor and it was a black and white striped critter, um, and so that was kind of fun for everybody to <laughs> surprise the little stuff too, come around the corner and saw all of us there. So. Um, but it certainly would be something, like I said, if you need a, a written request on that, we certainly need it. Yeah, then we can get it in front of the council. Yeah. Right, if yeah. you do background checks on any supervision overnight like that, like at a school, they shut down a lot of the camping on school property with kids and having parents come there because everyone who came there had to have a background check. You just can't. So something like this, do you do background checks on all the supervisors? You know, I'll be honest, Frank, this is the second one we do. Yeah. So we, you know, the, the first one was, like I said, several years ago. Um, 
and it, they actually came with their parents. They, they had to come, they had a, either a grandparent or a parent that came with them. Um, and then they did sign just a release, you know, that, you know, that they were staying there overnight. I, I guess I'd have to check, and what I'd probably do is check with other zoos that do this and see what, like, their policies are and what their criteria is. I, I'm not sure, to be honest with you, because we, this would be the second one we've ever done. Yeah. So, um, I just thought it was pretty great that they're coming from the Twin Cities when they have two zoos right there, that they would come here, and then our hope is that they would like it enough that they would come back after the overnight stay. Well, it is, you have an impressive zoo. Oh, thank you, Don. Thank you. Um, and we certainly hope, that's our goal, is certainly to bring people in, um, not just for us, but the other community members. Any more questions for Maria? Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. So that we so we get through it. I, I hope to get through it tonight. I'm, I'm hoping to do that. Uh, you might want to talk about the items uh, that we talked about tonight. I mean, first of all, we talked about the golf course. I mean, we've got twenty-five thousand dollars in the budget, same as small as twenty fourteen. We have in twenty fifteen in the budget for the golf course uh, for the twenty-five thousand. If you want to keep it in there, that's great. Uh, if you want to do something else with it, I mean, we need that direction. So maybe that's the First thing, I've got just a whole list of items that maybe we go down. It's such an attraction for our community. People, I mean, people come here for the golf course. So I think we should leave it in. I do too. Greg? I think we need to. We either have to make a long term decision uh, whether or not we're going to keep it in, and I would say that this time, keep, her, keep it operating, and to do that, Well, it's almost like we're giving the money before the year even happens. You know, what if they do break even next year? We don't give it to them. That was what that was what our our deal, deal was. That part of the deal. If uh, they do break even, they don't get the twenty five thousand dollars. It wasn't the uh, the, the uh, transfer has not been made for twenty fourteen. Okay. Uh, we plan to do that, but I think Gloria said I mentioned we do that at the beginning of the year, beginning of the next year. It takes care of the, the previous year. So, uh, and, and, and I thought we had the same thing I thought we had talked about. I mean, if they have a great year, why why we would see more it was to cover any loss that they would have. We do have, as was mentioned last night, I mean, there's still a pretty substantial uh, capital uh, amount of red in that operation. We have two different funds there that come out to five hundred grand or something like that. So there's still we have to pay money. that it's got five hundred grand. Five hundred grand back. That's been there a long time. It's been minutes gone through the for the years. So figure out. So we're way. just paying an interest on it, or where's that money? Yeah, yeah, we do. I mean, it borrows from other funds because any fund that's in the red borrows from the fund that's in the positive. So yes, it does. So we, we at some point have to find a way to get that, you know make the golf course or, or hopefully the golf course will be at a break even point but if they're still with the long term debt that we have to you know figure out how we're going to resolve that is that interest part of the debt sure because it pays interest every every month so we're marking that off that part of the debt part of this twenty one thousand we're in the hole right now is coming from that interest from the five hundred thousand we're paying no it's not for it. that was in the so in other words, uh, we're paying more towards this zoo than just the twenty-five thousand. We're also paying interest fees for five hundred thousand each year. The, the interest is what is part of what has made that fund so far in the red. I mean that that five hundred thousand includes that. the interest expense. 
but I'm just saying we're paying more than $25,000 here because we still are paying towards at 500000 So uh, it's more expensive than we actually think. I'm not a golfer, but and I live on the golf course. What but I making? do think it's a very valuable asset for the community. However, I think that we have to tighten some things up. One thing I think that we have as a council have to direct that the cameras be in place and functioning prior to the beginning of the next season. Well, the cameras are in and they're functioning. That they are. Uh, however, that's not what we read in that report of the missing funds. They weren't in there. That was two years ago. That's before the cameras were put in. That, that report was from 2012. That's an old dog drug off from underneath the rug again. You mean that six in the row thing? Yeah, the six, and then it was the eight, and that was from back in 2012. The cameras went in just, initially. I thought that just happened. No, that was another old stunt. It was the drug off the back of the curve. Two and a half years ago, it happened. The, 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 yeah, that was not this last dog. No. no. That was 2012. So there's right two the times. Right the first report. Two times there's <laughs> money missing? No. No, one, 2012. Okay. It was 2012, and, and the, the cameras are in, and they are working. It's just a matter of where the the uh, where the, the disc is being beamed to. Right? <laughs> Where's being recorded to? Yeah. It's being recorded. We've got 30 day backup on it. And, uh, so if they want to go look at it for, after 30 days, they can go look at it. Right, and they should be able to know if there's some money missing within 30 days. That's why I was so confused yeah. last night about that. So what's the big deal? Yeah. It's an old. Uh, it was an old issue that was. <coughs> but it was part of the purpose for putting the cameras in. Why was the issue brought up? You have to ask the person that brought it up. Residual campaign activity. Well, Lori, this, this large debt of 400 and whatever thousand, uh, who is that owed to? The city. The city. Right. So my point is, we're in essence, we're charging ourselves interest, yep. um, and that's what's confused me this entire time about the zoo. Mm -hmm. Even it's it's our debt that we've assumed. And so but we, but we borrow money between funds, you yeah, know, and that's, that's yeah. the way you account yeah, for it. So you, can't, you, have to, you can't take all the funds with the interest in there with all the funds that have positive cash balances. They are an interest, but the ones that are sitting in the red you know, it's There's still money that could have been used somewhere else. You know. What do we pay? You don't have to answer that right now, but I'd like to know what we're paying per year interest on that $500,000. I don't care how you shift it around or anything. I just would like to know that. It's just the same as the zoo debt. I know it's interest and interest is about killing the, us. You're talking about the, the, the golf course, not the zoo. <coughs> I know. I was just using that as an example. Okay. The interest on our debts are killing us. You know, if you look through in our bills, if we didn't have any debt, you know what we could do in this city? Build a water park. <laughs> <laughs> Water park. That's what's, what. are you talking about? That money was never even supposed to come from the city. You know. Uh, let's 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 go on. Let's go on. We'll be here all night. Yeah. This kind of stuff, though.